Well, hey folks, how are you? Thanks for coming back. Thanks for watching another episode of In The Loop TV. I'm your host, Don Grant, CTC, Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another great episode of In The Loop TV. Before we get started, please, as I do with every episode, just if you could, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with anybody that you think might enjoy these episodes and maybe enjoy some of my corny sense of humor as it shows up every once in a while. This episode's gonna be really fun because we're following up to the last episode. We had talked about thread mills and there is a lot to learn about thread mills. So let's follow it up. Let's talk about the three different types of thread mills. Let's dive into it. Let's tell you how to use them and let's get them in your spindle and get you more efficient at that spindle and at your shop. Let's do it. Let's talk about it next. Well, hey folks, we're back and thanks because you're back too. I hope you're at least back and uh, subscribers are getting up. Our views are getting up. So I'm hoping that people are seeing these and really enjoying um, what they're seeing and maybe getting a different perspective on cutting tools. I've been doing this for a long time, 34 years to be exact. So I like to take that knowledge and just kind of give it to you folks out there in YouTube land as a little bit more of an experience based versus maybe some science and theory, which we always throw in there too. This one's thread mills. We're gonna follow up. We're gonna talk more about thread mills, but this time we're gonna talk about the three different types of thread mills. We're gonna talk about a single form thread mill. We're gonna talk about a multi-form thread mill. And we're gonna talk about the elusive, and maybe you don't know about it, or maybe you're not very aware about it, the tri-form thread mill. This is what's coming up. But before we do that, we gotta run to the shop and get ready to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this episode is we're gonna kind of give you a theme. And I want everybody out there to think of these two words as we're running through these three different types of thread mills, because it's very important. It's very important with a lot of end mills, but in thread mills, it makes really good sense in picking out the right thread mill. And the two words I want you to think about are tool pressure, okay? That's gonna come up throughout this whole episode tool pressure. So think about that when we're talking about the different types of thread mills. So in order to talk about the first type of thread mill, everybody needs to understand something really quick. And I'm just going to go over this and I'm already assuming that most people know what threads are, but we have to keep in mind pitch. Pitch is very important in picking out a thread mill. Now pitch is the distance between each one of the threads. Now, as that distance gets closer together, there's more threads within one inch of distance or a metric thread would be a closer thread with a smaller number, right? A 0.4 metric thread is gonna be closer together than a 0.7. A 32 pitch, which means 32 threads within one inch is gonna be closer together than a 16 pitch. Why do I bring that up? Because we have to understand that the fewer threads or the larger the number in metric, the deeper the threads, okay? So the less threads within one inch, the deeper they go. Understand that because now we're going to dive into the thread mills and it's going to make a lot of sense in picking out which thread mill that you want to use. So let's just talk about the first one. Let's dive into these thread mills. Single form thread mill, right? A single form thread mill. Pretty self-explanatory. It's single, which means one, and it has one form on it. The form is what forms the thread 60 degrees. I'm assuming everybody knows what a thread mill is. I'm gonna explain the differences of the three different types. So what's the advantage and what's the positives of a single form thread mill? Well, number one is threads are defined by pitch. We already said that, right? Well, you'll notice when you grab a single form thread mill, it's not defined by pitch. We don't tell you what pitch it's used for. Why is that? You can use a single form thread mill for several different pitches. It's universal. It's got one form on it. You're generating the pitch. So if you wanna do a left-hand thread or a right-hand thread, which means you can do both of those with a single form thread mill, guess what? You can use it for a variety of pitches. I'm just gonna show you a little chart that's right up here. We carry it on a website. You can see that one 
thread mill, single form, can be used for a variety of pitches. Huge bonus because if you put it in your tool changer, you can use it for different threads without having to change that out. So not only can you use a single form thread for different pitches, it's a single form. So we had talked about the theme, right? The theme is tool pressure, tool pressure. Well, what creates tool pressure? A lot of different points of contact creates tool pressure. And when we have tool pressure, we have what? Anybody want to know? Guess? We have deflection. We want to push away. And how many times have we made a thread? We got to run a bunch of spring passes, right? That's my theme, spring passes, to get it not to deflect. With a single form thread mill, we don't have as much tool pressure. So it's not going to deflect as much. And if it's not going to deflect as much, we can go a lot deeper. That's why you'll see single form thread mills going four, five, six, eight times the diameter to a bottom of a hole because you're going to be able to get down there without that tool deflecting. Now, what else can we do with a single form thread mill? Well, thread mills are a little bit more universal. We already know that the pitch, you can use it for a variety of pitches. You know, you can go a lot deeper, but listen, you can do a left hand thread. You can do a right hand thread with a single form thread mill. It's all in the programming. Not going to dive into the programming because I got one more episode coming. So that's going to be a secret. But just to give you a little insight, right hand threads are bottom up because of the way the thread is. Okay. Left hand threads are top down. You're always trying to climb mill with a thread mill. That's a little spoiler alert for when we jump into the other, uh, the other episode that we finish with. You can do an external thread. You can do an internal thread with a single form thread mill. Very versatile, very good, but it does have a disadvantage. What do you think the disadvantage is? The disadvantage to a single form thread mill, because threads are defined by a pitch, which means there's so many of those pitches in a distance. A single form thread mill has to create every one of those pitches. So when you take a speed and feed and RPM, you put all that in there. If you have 32 of those pitches that you're creating, that's 32 revolutions just on one pass. So a single form thread mill is not as fast as a multi-form, which we're going to dive into next because it's got to generate every one of those revolutions to create the pitch. It takes a while, but it doesn't deflect. Okay. Doesn't deflect because it doesn't create tool pressure and it's very universal. Got it? Good. So the good old multi-form, multi-form thread mill. Let me see if that was a single form, one form, multi-form. What does that mean? Well, now we have multi-forms, which means look at all those different serrations that are 60 degree. That's the form because we're creating a thread and it's multi, which means we don't have to make as many passes with a multi-form thread mill, right? It gets it done a lot quicker. Now, a multi-form thread mill, when you look at it, is going to be defined by a pitch. Remember, a single form doesn't have a pitch because you can use it because you're generating the pitch. A multi-form thread mill has that pitch on it. So you're picking it for a 28 pitch, you're picking it for a 16 pitch, uh, you're picking it for a 12 pitch, and if you're in metric, you're picking it for a 0.5 or whatever that is. When you pick the pitch on a multi-form thread mill, what you have to do is stay within those limits. But the advantage that you're getting with a multi-form, remember where I said a single form is creating every revolution. So if you have 32 pitches, and let's say you're going down a half inch, you have to create how many of those 32 pitches are within a half inch. With a multi-form thread mill, guess what? One revolution. It's multi-form. It's taking care of all of those serrations in one revolution. We're generating that helical ramp with a multi-form doing one revolution. So we have our threads on there a lot quicker than we do with a single form. So a multi-form is a lot faster than a single form. But guess what? Multi-form also does left-hand threads, does right-hand threads. Remember, uh, right-hand threads, bottom up, uh, left-hand threads, top down. Uh, most threads are right-hand, so that's why I say that. It can also do an external and an internal thread too as well. But what does a multi-form thread mill bring in that is the theme of this whole training? A multi-form thread mill brings in 
tool pressure, right? Tool pressure, right? The more flutes, the more forms we have in the cut, the more tool pressure we produce. And when we're producing tool pressure, we get the old deflection. And when we get deflection, we have to run. Go ahead. You want to say it? I'll say it. Spring passes. Multiple spring passes because who wants a taper in a threaded hole, right? So a multi-form thread mill is now staying in that window of maybe two times the diameter, which means in my opinion, and I've run a lot of thread mills, I like to stay within two times the diameter on a multi-form thread mill in order to not run as many spring passes, in order to not to get the tool to deflect and get a nice clean hole the first time. Okay, now. Triform. I know everybody's been waiting for a triform. What's so special about a triform? Well, first of all, we know the form is a 60 degree, right? Unless you're doing a British standard thread and that's 55. I know everybody out there that's up on threads probably knows there is a 55 degree. There's Acme threads. There's different things. We're talking about UN threads and metric threads, which are 60 degree. So a triform thread mill is exactly that. We have a form of 60 degree and we have three forms on it. Okay. Now it's a little bit different and this work gets a little bit different with a triform thread mill and I'm really going to dive into this and give you some tricks. Our triform thread mills, and I can't speak for everybody else, are left hand spiral, left hand cut, which means when you want to do a right hand thread, it is not from the bottom to the top. Okay. Which in case you would be putting three lobes in cut and three lobes in tool pressure, you are from the top to the bottom for a right hand cut. So if you're cutting from the top to the bottom for a right hand cut, let's think about this. I geek out on this because this stuff is really cool and it's things that we overlook as manufacturers, but we shouldn't overlook as applications and machinists. When you're going top to bottom, we get a lot of benefits, right? The first benefit is guess what? Our tool pressure is created by the first form. The first form is creating your thread. Okay. So it acts like a single form when it's creating your tool pressure. So the tool pressure is reduced because you got one thread in there. Now, remember what we talk about? If you go too deep, maybe you have to run some spring passes because, um, the tool is deflecting. Think about this with a triform thread mill. If it's top to bottom and the first one is cutting, that's where your tool pressure is coming. The other two, forms are doing what they're chasing the first form. So what you're getting is almost like a natural spring pass with a triform thread mill. I think this is pretty impressive and it's pretty cool because the other two forms on there are chasing the first form and it's giving you a better hole. It's reducing the amount of spring. Okay. And it's putting less pressure when you're actually cutting. So can it do a left hand thread and a right hand thread, the triform? Yes, it can. Can it do an external thread and an internal thread? Yes, it can. And another benefit to a triform thread mill is it's stronger. Okay. Now ours in particular, we kind of design them for hardened materials or keep in mind. Okay. Not only hardened materials, but if you actually drill a hole and you work hard in the hole, and you have to go back and tap it or thread mill it. Think about using a thread mill that's a lot stronger. A triform thread mill is stronger. It's from top to bottom, okay? It'll get through the job kind of like a natural spring pass, and it's very advantageous. Still not as fast as a multi-form, probably faster than a single form because it's stronger, but it's a great thread mill for using that. Okay, last little tip on the triform thread mill. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quiz the machinist out there. Okay. Cause I'm going to say one thing and I want you to put the comments below about what I'm talking about. Now we talked about triform thread mill and it's left hand spiral, left hand cut. What does this mean? M4, not M3. Okay. If you know what I'm talking about, please put the comments below. It's a nice little quiz. Let's throw that in there. M4 on a left hand spiral, left hand cut, not an M3. Well, we's going to have problems and you're probably going to be calling technical support and that's why the uh, thread mill is breaking. Please put your comments below. I think that'll be kind of cool just to see where your expertise lies. Okay. It's time for recap time. Let's just do recap time here real quick. 
Single form thread mill. Where would I use a single form thread mill? Well, when I'm trying to be a little bit more universal, I need some uh, space in my tool changer, I'm probably going to throw a couple single form thread mills in there. Are they faster? Are they fast? No, they're not. They have to do a lot of revolutions, okay? But they generate less tool pressure. Less tool pressure means I can go a lot deeper without having to take spring passes. Multi form thread mill. Multi form thread mill, what does this mean? We can do one revolution, we can go a lot faster. We're limited because of tool pressure. We're limited on how deep we can go with the deflection that we're gonna get. Now it's all based on the material you're gonna run, right? A softer material like aluminum, you could probably get away going a little bit deeper on a multi-form thread mill. Once you get into ferrous material, be mindful, two times D. My recommendation is going two times D on that. Tri-form thread mill. Probably the strongest thread mill. It gives you the benefits of a single, gives you a little bit of the benefits of a multi. It's stronger, left-hand spiral, left-hand cut, M4, not M3. Remember, put your comments below. And those are the benefits of all three thread mills. So folks, that's it. Boy, that was a lot of information on thread mills. We talked about the three types of thread mills, right? We talked about a single form thread mill. We talked about a multi-form thread mill. And we talked about a tri-form thread mill. It's not, it's not up there, is it? It's, it's down there, right? Please, up there. Thank you. And we talked about a tri-form thread mill. All these different types of thread mills. There's a lot to learn about it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a phone number right over here. If you can, screenshot it, put it over there. If you're having problems with picking out the right thread mill, you call that phone number, you tell them the cutting tool counselor said to give a call because I need recommendations to run this thread mill efficiently. Please do that. Please like, please subscribe. Please come back for the next episode because we're gonna talk about programming these thread mills and there's a lot of tips and tricks and programming it. it gets a little tricky gets a little difficult we're going to run through a program we're going to help you out with that we're going to talk about speeds and feeds and we're just going to get you up to speed on thread mills and close this whole thing out but until then please come back for the next episode and i want to leave you with one thing there's three things in life we're never going to get away from death taxes and spring passes have a great rest of your week folks